Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. This is our fourth part of DP203 exam question and answer series. And today we are going to cover another set of 15 latest questions on DP203. And friends, while doing these questions, we will also understand the concepts around structured and unstructured data, data bricks, version control, Azure Data Factory, CLAP Analytics, NoSQL database, and much more. So watch the video very carefully and understand the concepts as that will help you achieve the DP203 certificate. And as always, if this video adds any value to your learning, please appreciate our efforts by pressing the like button, subscribing to the channel and press that bell icon to receive all the notifications. So far in this series, we are already done with three parts where we covered 25 questions on DP203 and we also understood what is DP203, who should do it, exam details, question format, exam patterns and the best way to prepare for DP203. All these important details were covered in introduction part 1. Links to all the previous parts are available in the description box. And friends, to help you further in your offline studies, I will share a free PDF file with all the 15 questions covered in this part 4. And for that, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 27, 32 and question number 40. All the answers are available in this video itself. So let's start our part 4. Friends, we ended our previous video that was part 3 of DP203 exam question and answer series with understanding what are the core responsibilities of an AI engineer. And today we open our part 4 with understanding what are the core responsibilities of a data engineer and data scientist. So let's begin with question number 26. The question says that which role is correct for a person who works being responsible for the provisioning and configuration of both on-premises and cloud data platform technologies. Your options are a data engineer, a data scientist or an AI engineer. The correct answer for this one is option A, a data engineer. Now let's also have a look at data scientist. So question number 27 says that who performs advanced analytics to help drive value from the data? Your options are a data engineer, a data scientist or an AI engineer. And the correct answer of course is option B, a data scientist. Let's move on with question number 28. The question says that choose the valid examples of structured data. Your options are Microsoft SQL Server, binary files, Azure SQL database, audio files, Azure SQL data warehouse or image files. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Microsoft SQL Server, option C, Azure SQL database and option E, Azure SQL data warehouse. And friends, just so you know that Microsoft Azure SQL data warehouse is now known as Azure CNAPS. And now let's move on with question number 29. The question says that choose the valid examples of unstructured data. Your options again are Microsoft SQL Server, Binary Files, Azure SQL Database, Audio Files, Azure SQL Data Warehouse or Image File. And this time the answer is option B, Binary Files, option D, Audio Files and option F, Image Files. Let's quickly jump to question number 30. The question number 30 says Azure Databricks is, so you have to tell whether Azure Databricks is a data analytics platform or is it a AI platform or is it a data ingestion platform. The correct answer for this question is that Azure Databricks is a data analytics platform. Next we have question number 31. The question says Azure Databricks encapsulates which Apache storage technology? Your options are Apache HD Insight, Apache Hadoop or Apache Spark. The correct answer for this question is option C Apache Spark. Now let me give you a little bit more information on each of the option. So the first one which is Apache HD Insight, actually there is nothing like Apache HD Insight. It's actually Azure HD Insight which is a fully managed full spectrum open source analytics service for enterprises. HD Insight is a cloud service that makes it easy, fast, cost effective to process massive amounts of data. And then we have Apache Hadoop which is the original open source framework for distributed processing and analysis of big data sets on clusters. 
and the option C which is Apache Spark the correct answer for this question so Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytic platform optimized for Microsoft Azure so just a one liner definitions of each of the option to get you started moving on with question number 32 which says that which security features does Azure Databricks does not support your options are Azure Active Directory shared access keys or role based access the correct answer is option b shared access keys so what is a shared access keys shared access keys are a security feature used within azure storage accounts azure active directory and role based access are supported security features in azure databricks and here comes question number 33 and that says that which of the following azure databricks is used to support for r sql python scala and java the options are MLlib, which is machine learning library. Then we have GraphX and last one is Spark Core API. And the correct answer for this question is option C, Spark Core API. Now let me give you a little bit more detail on each of the option. So here we can see MLlib, which is a machine learning library consisting of common learning algorithms and utilities including classification, regression, clustering, collaborative filtering, dimensionality reduction as well as underlying optimization primitives. The second option which is GraphX that provides graphs and graph computation for a broad scope of use cases from cognitive analytics to data exploration. And then of course we have Spark Core API which is the correct answer for this question and that's support for our SQL, Python, Scala and Java in Azure Databricks. Now let's move on with question number 34 and that says that which notebook format is used in Databricks? Your options are DBC, dot .notebook or dot .spark and the correct answer is DBC. So basically my friends DBC file types are supported Databricks notebook format. And just to clarify, there are no .notebook or .spark file format available. Now let's jump to question number 35. And this question says that you configure version control for an Azure Data Factory instance as shown in the following exhibit. So here you can see this is a Git repository. We are also given with its type. We have Azure DevOps Git. Then we have Azure DevOps account. The name of the account is given. The project name is given. Repository name is given. And then we are also given with the collaboration branch and also given with the publish branch. Now let's move ahead. And this says that use the drop down menus to select the answer choices that completes each statements based on the information presented in the graphics. We just saw the information presented here in the image, which is also called graphic. And you have to note that each correct selection is worth one point. So let's look at the first option. The first one is Azure Resource Manager, which is ARM template for the pipelines assets are stored in. So are these ARM templates stored in ADF Publish? So what is ADF Publish? ADF Publish is the publish branch name. Then we have main. What is main? So main is basically the collaboration branch. And then we have parameterization template. And here on the left hand side, you can see the parameterization template. So the correct option to store the ARM templates for pipeline assets in is ADF publish. So in ADF publish, which is basically the publish branch, here you store the ARM templates for the pipelines assets. Now let's move to the second option. And it says a data factory Azure resource manager, again the ARM template, named Contoso sales can be found in your options are Contoso sales and then we have slash DW batch ETL which basically is the repository name and then we have ADF publish what is ADF publish again the publish branch and then we have Contoso sale the last option given is slash main which basically is a collaboration branch and the correct answer for this option is this one so basically here we are saying that the data factory arm template can be found in this path so friends, if you relate this correct answer with that of this exhibit, you can say that first we have repository name, then we have published branch, and then we have the final location where the ARM templates are stored. And here comes question number 36. Question says that you use Azure Data Factory to prepare data to be queried by Azure CNAP Analytics serverless SQL pools. Files are initially ingested into an Azure Data Lake storage Gen2 account as 10 small JSON file. Each file contains the same data attributes and data from a subsidiary of your company. You need to move all the files to a different folder and transform the data to meet the following requirement. 
the first requirement is provide the fastest possible query times the second one is automatically infer the schema from the underlying files how should you configure the data factory copy activity and to answer you need to select the appropriate option in the answer area of course each answer selection contains one point and here in the answer area you are given with copy behavior and the second one you are given with is sync file type and you have to pick the correct answer for each of them the correct answer for the first copy behavior is merge file and the correct answer for the sync file type is parquet and here comes question number 37 the question says that you have a data model that you plan to implement in a data warehouse in azure cnap analytics as shown in the following exhibit all the dimension tables will be less than 2 gb after compression and the fact table will be approximately 6 tb the dimension tables will be relatively static with very few data inserts and updates which type of the table should you use for each table to answer this question you have to select the appropriate option in the answer area each selection is worth one point and here you can see in this exhibit we are given with three dimension table the first one is employee the second one is customer and then we have a dimension table for time similarly we are given with one fact table as well which is daily booking you can also observe the relationship between all these table on the right hand side you are given with four boxes in the answer area each representing one table so we have one box for customer then we have employee dimension time and then we have daily bookings and now you can also observe the option given for each of the table is exactly the same we have hash distributed we have round robin and we have replicated now let me first give you the answer and then i will give you my logic for selecting these answers and here comes the answer so you can see for all the dimension table i have selected replicated as the correct answer on the other hand for the fact table which is the daily booking i have chosen hash distributed and the reason my friends is hidden in the question itself the question gives you a hint that the dimension tables will be less than 2 gb after compression so all the dimension table whether it's customer or employee or time they all are less than 2 gb after compression and because of this small size i have chosen replicated as the correct answer choosing hash distributed or round robin will be a overkill for tables which are less than 2 gb on the other hand the question also says that the fact table will be approximately 6 tb which is rather big size that's why i have chosen hash distributed now let me take you to the microsoft documentation to understand a little bit more on hash distributed and round robin so here on this microsoft documentation you can read all about what is a distributed table and here it's given that hash distribution improves query performance on large fact table and is a focus of this article secondly it says that the round robin distribution is useful for improving loading speed so i hope you can observe that the hash distribution is for the large fact tables and that's the logic my friends behind choosing hash distributed for the fact table i hope my friends you are clear with the logic however if you have any doubts or you want to have more discussion you can connect me in the comment section below or you can also connect with the tech blackboard on other social media platform where you have facility to message us one to one now let's move to question number 38 the question says that you are designing a data engineering solution for data stream processing you need to recommend a solution for data ingestion in order to meet the following requirements the first requirement is ingest millions of events per second the second one is easily scale from streaming megabytes of data to terabytes while keeping control over when and how much to scale and then we have integrate with azure functions and the last one is natively connected with stream analytics to build end-to-end -end serverless streaming solution what would you recommend your options are azure cosmos db apache spark azure cnap analytics or azure event hubs the correct answer for this question is option d azure event hubs now let's move to question number 39 and the question says that you are a data engineer implementing a lambda architecture on microsoft azure you use a open source big data solution to collect process and maintain data the problem is that the analytical data store performed poorly you must implement a solution that meets the following requirement 
provide data warehousing, reduce ongoing management activities, deliver SQL query responses in less than one second. You need to create a HD inside cluster to meet the requirements. Which type of cluster should you create? Your options are Apache HBase, Apache Hadoop Interactive Query or Apache Spark. The correct answer for this question is option D Apache Spark. And the reason for choosing Apache Spark as an answer is because Apache Spark supports interactive queries through Spark SQL. It also supports data warehousing capabilities and less management because there are out of the box features. And that means that Apache Sparks fulfill all the requirements that are asked in the question. And now here on your screen is question number 40, which is the last question for the part four of DP203 question and answer series. Let's read the question and it says that which data platform technology is globally distributed multi-model database that can perform queries in less than a second. Your options are SQL database, Azure SQL database, Apache Hadoop, Cosmos DB or Azure SQL CNAPS. And the correct answer for this one is Cosmos DB. And the reason is that Cosmos DB is a globally distributed multi-model database that can offer sub-second query performance. So friends, those were 15 latest questions on DP203. What are your doubts? What are your questions? Let me know in the comment section and I will make sure that all your questions and doubts are covered in the upcoming parts. And friends, please do not forget that you can appreciate our work by pressing that like button, subscribing to the channel and sharing our videos with everyone who is preparing for Azure certifications. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.